Hi Aquarius, I hope that everybody's doing well. Before we get into this, I would like to set the intention for this to be a space where everyone allows themselves to feel seen and validated and ultimately for this to be a safe space and a healing space in alignment with everyone's highest good. Seeing something that we've been working on, traveling down the path of alignment, Maybe you're feeling more comfortable prioritizing yourself at this point in time. Okay. For some of you, there's a there's a group of people. Um, these are people or a person that you're already familiar with. I'm seeing you move, moving away, moving on. It's like finally recognizing that being around some type of energy, and this can be your own habits, isn't helping you anymore. I'm seeing this be already something that you've lived through, something you've experienced already. And this can even be um, things that you feel had been maybe energetically holding on to you a bit. Again, stuff from the past that you experience, maybe a person, some type of frequency. And I'm seeing you finally get to a point where you're ready to move on. It's like you're ready to live in the present. You're ready for whatever it is that your future holds. And you know that it's not like maintaining energetic ties with whatever this frequency is from the past that you know is not looking out for your best interest. Maybe some of you feel as well like you're still having a hard time actually getting to the point of moving away from this energy. I'm seeing something that we're manifesting here, something that we're working on. Maybe you're also still trying to find your own light in a way that feels empowering enough to you to be able to know what you need to move from, move on from. There's also a sense of thinking as well. Um, maybe you still feel like you're getting dragged back into the past in a way. Like, it's almost like needing to let go of some type of past experience that you had. And maybe needing to process that. It's like, it happened, it's done, it's over with. And so now it's time to move on. The way, um, maybe we're looking for some type of awareness here. The way that you'll know that you still haven't processed something yet. Um, okay, for example, like if I look at the comments on a, on a video and I'm seeing somebody still talking about like some type of narcissistic situation they're in, like some type of problem they're, they're having, it means that that person is still working through that. So say if like you're watching a reading and a particular person is coming to mind talking about something that happened in the past, like if you have not yet like gotten all the way through this, if you are still finding that reading relevant when it's talking about your past, it means that there's still something that you need to process and move beyond. So that is a way that you can tell if you're still stuck in some type of I'm hearing dimension when it comes to a frequency that you were dealing with that you feel um, was not looking out for your best interest. This can be something from childhood, this can be a past experience romantically that you had with someone, this can be a friend, it can be a sibling I'm getting. So it can be anything like that. So as I said before, it's like if you're still bringing this experience up into the conversation space, whether these are thoughts that you're having or actually like every time you get an opportunity, you want to bring it up or when you're leaving a comment, you want to talk about it. It means that it's still something that you're working through and something that you have not let go of yet. And maybe this is also part of the self-awareness process as well. It's like maybe even recognizing that you still have attachments to certain things. But I'm seeing you, it's like you get what you need and I'm seeing you move beyond this. This is about giving yourself the time and patience that you need to actually process something in order to completely move on from it. 
rather than just being like, I'm moving on, I don't want to think about it anymore. And this is also about giving yourself the time and space you need to truly be healing. I'm seeing this be a lot more like mental and spiritual than it is like you physically moving out of a space, although it can also be you moving out of a space physically, but it's more so like mentally, spiritually, emotionally. This is about needing to move out of a space that you may still feel you are lingering within. And I'm seeing there be almost a type of suspension. It's like not being able to not being able to actually move energetically until this is something that you process it's like it's going to keep you stuck in that place until you find the ladder and you climb out of that hole This is really interesting too. Okay, so I'm I'm getting this message as well um, from the guides. If you are, the way that like psychologically even we can tell what's in the forefront of someone's mind if they're speaking up on someone, like if you see someone and immediately, this is just an example, um, if you see someone and immediately you're like thinking about their physique or their weight and like concentrating on that concept it means that internally this is also something that you obsess over it has nothing to do with the person that's being projected onto maybe this has also been an experience of you being projected onto like a parent or someone commenting on your weight something like that just an example again um and this is like someone's internal process that they're moving through so it's like if you're the first one to when you see a person immediately think about like what that person looks like things of that nature it means that it's also something again that may be like an obsessive type of thought that you're having also something that needs to be worked through something that needs to be balanced interesting concept And the reason that tarot is so interesting as well and can really reveal what is going on psychologically with a person is that tarot is kind of like a blueprint, okay? And the reader is the one that is coloring out the blueprint. So if you find that a reading is not relevant to you, then nothing that it's speaking on is going to be like touching aspects of your life relevantly to wherever you are in a moment. However, if there are certain things that you pick up on and things that come to mind when it comes to the reading it means that it's something that's happening in your life and it may seem a little bit like yeah of course it's either going to be relevant to me or it's not but it can give you a lot more insight like the deeper you think into it and the more that it elicits from you so there's this thought about speaking something out i'm looking at mercury here i'm looking at the king of swords but being hesitant to do so for some of you there's for sure still an energy of like i'm hearing paying mind paying mind to someone from the past again it's like feeling a sense of fixation when it comes to something that happened and again, because of this, it's not allowing you to move forward. Maybe you still, again, feel like you have things that you need to resolve when it comes to this energy. Yeah, I'm... So, if... I'm getting this message so clearly from the guides here. If you are still maintaining some type of energetic connection, meaning like you're talking about this person, you're bringing up this person, your thoughts keep going back to this person, this was somebody that the connection or whatever went down in the situation was not a pleasant experience. I'm seeing there be a need to break these energetic connections that we have with this person from the past this is something that already happened so we can um i'm here consciously move on from this situation okay it's like taking a break from keeping tabs it's like maybe even wanting to channel your energy into something that feels productive for you rather than something that may even be 
continually triggering to you to experience. Also, when we are reliving moments, when we're having memories of situations, our body sometimes is not able to um, decipher whether that instance is actually occurring or not. And so you're also physiologically going to be affected by that. So it's like, if you're also just thinking about things that bring you happiness and stuff, your body is also going to feel that. Thinking about times when you were having like pleasurable experiences and things you felt motiva motivated and inspired by, that's how your body is going to react. So this is also about thought controlling when it comes to where your mind is drifting to, where you want to be deliberately placing your energy as well. And it's like time to really focus on you because I'm seeing there be almost like... Um, this this maintaining this habit that we've been maintaining about like looking everywhere else except internal and like the journey that we take the spiritual journey is all us going within it's not about the external journey at all it's all about where we go internally and i'm seeing that be something like maybe even recognizing as well how much energy you're giving to outward experiences and this can even be like you have a friend and the experiences that your friend is going through like you feel so frustrated by it it's like why does that matter to you why is that something that you're spending your time and energy focusing on and how do we bring that back to ourselves Because you may be like, well, there's nothing devastating going on in my life right now, yet you can't sleep at night and you're having anxiety and you're thinking about all of these other people and the drama and experiences that they're going through. And this is about like pulling all that energy back to you so you can channel it into what you want it to go into, something that's going to be beneficial to you. And maybe there's also a sense of avoidance here when it comes to looking within as well. This seems like um this seems like a lot that we're doing when it comes to shadow work. Yeah, I'm seeing spirit like bumping bumping the page of swords out of the way, which is like us wanting to be involved in things externally and like giving our time and attention to that. Spirit is bumping that out of the way and landing on us pulling our energy back to ourselves, focusing on yourself, focusing on your self-care. What is it that you need to do to give yourself time to rest, to meditate, to center, to ground, things like that? And this is about really prioritizing, prioritizing self here, prioritizing your spirit, life philosophies, mantras, things that allow you to elevate rather than things that suck your energy into them. Because we have the power to choose where our energy goes. So it's not like anyone taking your power away from you. When we feel like that, it's because we are openly giving our power to a situation. So this is about choosing, like whether your power is with you or whether you are giving it to something else. Because if you do not want to give your power to someone, that person is not going to be able to take it. Your power, your energy, things like that. And this does take a high level of mastery as well. I'm being I'm being guided to say it's something that takes work. It's something I'm also hearing that takes precision. But something repetitively that you want to do. And this may even be a sense of unlearning like some type of I'm hearing archetypal habit. Very interesting. Okay, archetypal habit. when it comes to a sense of fixation and also avoidance when it comes to us looking within in a very deep way because maybe you'll reflect and you're willing to reflect on certain things but when it comes to other things there's a sense of fear and this is also something that we're being guided to focus on because it's like, I really don't like the job that I'm in and I really want to leave. And it's like, instead of facing that and like finding a way to pull your power back to yourself and make a decision so you don't have to work that job anymore, it's like maybe choosing to eat instead, maybe choosing to gossip, maybe like watching mindless TV, things like that, you know, stuff that distracts us from what you already know. But it's just about actually tuning that voice up when it comes to where your soul is trying to lead you and this is how we get more in connection with our intuition
And I'm seeing some type of action that needs to be taken. I'm seeing this also be related to a form of communication. Yeah, it's like wanting to have definitely some sort of conversation with someone about the feelings that you have, feeling hesitant about doing this. I'm looking at a very big highlight on Mercury here. I'm looking at Taurus, Mercury. I'm looking at Neptune and I'm looking at Sagittarius. Yeah, for sure. There's like something that needs to be expressed or communicate, needs to be expressed or communicated that there's definitely a sense of avoidance when it comes to this. But because of that avoidance, and this can be a conversation you want to be having with yourself and or another person. Because of this avoidance when it comes to expressing yourself, it's stopping you from manifesting the things that you want. It's also hindering like you moving forward in a way and openly expressing something that needs to be expressed. And maybe there's also a sense of anxiety because you don't know how that is going to be received when it's expressed as well. Remember, energies can always be reversed. There can be somebody that's kind of stopping themselves and they want to be speaking with you, Aquarius, for sure. I'm looking at the High Priestess on the bottom of the deck. And when we do internal work as well, there's never a point where you get to where you're just like, okay, I'm done. I don't have to work on myself anymore. It's a process and progress is not linear. Sometimes you feel like you're making headway. Sometimes you feel like you get thrown back a couple steps. It's all about like perseverance and continuing to do a bit at a time to actually get somewhere. I'm looking at the sun popping out. Remember, energies can always be reversed. I'm getting that somebody is recognizing how they feel towards someone else and maybe wanting to express this. We're looking at the fifth house. And interesting, the fifth house. We're looking at the sun. Leo does rule the fifth house naturally. And we're looking at Gemini. Some type of communication, expression. I'm getting specifically that this has to do with another person. It's like recognizing that when you're around someone, you feel a sense of joy. Maybe in a way that feels, in a sense, irreplaceable because of how this person, I'm hearing, uniquely touches you, Aquarius. And this can, it doesn't have to be a person. This can be like, this can be an animal that you enjoy spending time with. This can be an activity that you're doing that, um, that you feel very inspired by. And in the moment when you are like actively, I'm hearing activated within that activity. Interesting. This can be a child. This can be, again, a person. For some of you, I'm seeing romantically that there's some type of involvement or opening up when it comes to feelings that we have towards someone. I'm being guided to mention this. When we do tarot, it is speaking about what's going on on an energetic plane. And so this may or may not have already happened physically like on the 3d plane so if i'm talking about something energetically and you're like okay most of this is resonating with me but this part right here i'm not really getting keep in mind also these are general readings it may take a little bit of time to resonate on the 3d plane like to manifest on the 3d plane okay so being guided to mention that maybe for someone in particular so maybe this is even about opening yourself up to some sort of opportunity that you are, I'm hearing, going to be invested in. For some of you, I'm seeing specifically this is another person. This is some type of connection. And if we are um, 
Yeah, I'm okay. Specifically, I'm seeing this is like either work related, you're going to be working with someone, or this is like some sort of companionship. I'm hearing some type of relationship. You could be doing something creative with this person. This also could be some type of like expression that we are feeling when it comes to us and another outside of yourself, okay? If we're talking about the fifth house as well, because I keep looking at the sun and I keep hearing the fifth house, this can also speak about love affairs and things like that. Things that bring you pleasure, things that bring you joy. I'm seeing you linking up with someone here. Someone that I'm getting you're able to communicate well with and like you may even you may even like to collaborate with this person, like maybe even in your personal life, Aquarius. For some of you, this is about work. I'm hearing work setting. Wow. I'm looking at the four of wands here. I'm looking at the high priestess on the bottom of the deck. This can be a twin flame. This can be a soulmate. This can be someone that potentially you could be in a long-term relationship with. Even something leading to marriage as well. It's like you get along so well with this person, but this is also about communicating actively, I'm hearing. And this is about spending time, I'm hearing, getting to know one another. I'm seeing it be like immediately when you see this person, you feel some type of initial spark. It's like something within you feels like it lights up energetically in connection between you and this person I'm seeing here. And it's like you get off to a good foot. I'm seeing you guys be able to communicate really well. Maybe you have a lot of ideas when it comes to like your interactions with this person. Maybe some type of Mercury contact. Maybe some type of personal planet contact within your synastry. I'm hearing that illicit joy. I am looking at the sun, so maybe we have something like that. Harmonious aspect. We're looking as well at the four of the four of wands here. Maybe something between Mercury and the Sun specifically with this person within your synastry charts. Again, this is somebody that it like I'm not seeing this as taking time to build, even though like if you would want something to be long standing with this person, it would take that like that type of work that you would put in. But I'm getting like initially when you meet this person, like you have some sort of knowing and I'm seeing that this is mutual, like there's definitely a sense of mutual attraction that you feel here. This is like a Venus in the first house in your synastry type of vibe. And maybe even in the fifth house or maybe Mercury in the fifth. I'm looking at another Leo card. I'm definitely getting some type of highlight when it comes to... Interesting. I'm hearing something about Venus and something about Leo. Um, maybe a highlight on the fifth house or the sun in contact that you have again with this person. This is somebody as well, it's really interesting getting into the dynamic of this. This is somebody as well that when you're around them, you would feel creative. You feel like it also brings out your personality in a way. Maybe you feel like they're very accepting of you. Remember, energies can always be reversed. This can be how this person feels when they're with you. Um, like this person really is feeling like they're able to shine, I'm hearing, standing next to you. That's a beautiful energy. I'm like really not seeing any... Um, interesting i'm not seeing anything about like a competitive type of spirit it's more so like feeling like when you're together you can shine even brighter like that kind of thing so it's like a teammate kind of energy like a soulmate i'm looking at the emperor popping out here this may be an Aries, this may be a Leo, Gemini. I'm looking at another Leo. Like their sun can be in Gemini, Leo, Aries. Or their Mars can be in Leo. Their Mars can be in Gemini. Because Aries is ruled by Mars. We're looking at Gemini here. Some highlight on the fifth house, the first house. This can also be those areas of your chart too. You could be a sun, a sun sign Gemini or Aries or Leo.
specifically, I'm getting someone here has their, um, has their moon in Gemini, moon in Aquarius, is what I'm hearing. Okay, so what I'm picking up on is, um, One of the parties, maybe even both of the parties, this is about letting your guard down in a way where you feel more comfortable communicating with one another. For some of you, you may work together and there may be like some type of, like if you meet somebody in the workplace or like you have a connection with someone in the workplace, one of the people may be moving out of the workplace actually, like in order to have this relationship, that's really interesting. It's like maybe you're recognizing that you don't want to work together because you want to, like it somehow would affect your relationship. Maybe some type of policy. I don't know. But I'm seeing like one person, this may be a specific message, one person like leaving wherever it is that they work because you guys work together, like in order to have this relationship. It's like in order to take things further. But for others of you, this is about letting go of control and needing things to be a certain way. It's like allowing things to happen as they will. For some of you, there may also be like an, an additional person as well that's connected with one of the parties. And this is also something that needs to be separated from in order to allow this to happen. Because I'm seeing there be some sort of transition where it's like I'm seeing three people and then I'm seeing there come an ending to that and I'm seeing it be left with two people here. Maybe you even are introduced to somebody through a friend, something like that. Like I'm seeing a sense of everybody hanging out together, but then it's like you're hanging out with this person alone, I'm seeing. For some of you, this is even a spirit guide, a spirit guide that's brought you guys together. This is so interesting. So I'm looking at, I'm, I'm getting specifically that this would be somebody new. I'm looking at Uranus energy. This is Aquarius here. And I'm looking at the 10 of cups. It's like taking a chance, taking a leap of faith to be happy. And we are seeing the divine masculine here which all of us have within us, so that's not associated with a specific gender, if one identifies with a gender in particular. For some of you, there may be some type of difference when it comes to you and this person. Like for some of you, um, this could just be somebody that's very established. For others, this can be someone like there's some type of age difference. For others, this can be someone like higher up in a company, something like that. But this is all about taking a chance, getting connected with your happiness and your inspiration and truly having faith in whatever this connection is that's, I'm hearing, coming to term. This is really interesting as well. I'm, I'm seeing somebody... Um, somebody that has a particular job where it's like you may be more on um on like the bottom of the food chain when it comes to some type of job that you're doing and i'm seeing there either be some sort of um some sort of upgrade or promotion when it comes to job career something that's also changing and maybe also when you meet this person you're finding that um I'm hearing stimulation of the finances, like something with um, financial gain. Very interesting. I'm 
I'm seeing there also be some type of admiration. It's like either this person really appreciates you for what you do at work or like you really value the role that this person plays within their job, something like that. Like they feel very stable. There's both an energy of like a lot of fire and passion here. I'm getting for sure some type of emphasis on like Leo or the fifth house within this person's chart. This can also be your chart. And I'm seeing something as well with... um. The Mercury energy, again, I am looking at um, Mars and Gemini together here. I'm looking at Mars and Leo together here. This can be someone with Uranus and Leo or Aries or Gemini. Okay, so I'm seeing that this connection definitely facilitates a healthy a healthy bond, a healthy lifestyle. This is somebody that there's definitely a lot of emotion. There's definitely a big sense of maturity when it comes to the emotional connection. Also a sense of stability. Like you could be really working on your stability when it comes to finances, job, career, things like this. This person that those things also matter as well to this individual. I'm getting some Capricorn Taurus vibes from this as well. Like they may have some significant placement like maybe MC, something like that, or North Node. I'm seeing there also be a very big emotionally stable connection. It's like between the two of you, I'm seeing it almost like when you guys are together, it I'm hearing emanates the energy. It's like the frequency, the archetype of the King of Cups and also the King of Pentacles. Like also both of you guys may as well... Um, you may feel like you're similar in certain type of ways, like when it comes to the masculine and the feminine energy, but I'm seeing this person has a good balance of yin and yang, but they may be more action oriented. This may also be you, but I'm seeing like, however it breaks down, there's also a sense of it working well compatibly with you and this individual. They could also have a highlight of Aries within their chart. And a particular type of Aquarius placement I'm seeing, or Uranus. Maybe conjunct something specific. I'm seeing this be a big cycle that, like, it took a lot to get to this point with this person. Like, a lot of things I'm getting had to fall into place in order for you to get there. And there's also a sense of needing to let go as well. Like, this is why I feel like there was that highlight in the beginning of needing to let go of things that you feel are holding you back or distracting your energy. Because I'm seeing, like, when you break loose of the things that you feel... Um, are no longer benefiting you to be giving your energy to, I'm seeing that this is the place that you are moving into. And there's a definite sense of like coming together with this person and being able to form some type of unit with them. For some of you, there may be like something that's being sacrificed as well for this relationship, but it's something that you feel would be out of place to hold on to if you were to maintain the dynamic with this person. So just to go over the signs again, I'm looking at the sun, I'm looking at Gemini, I'm looking at Leo, I'm looking at Aries, I'm looking at Uranus energy here. All right, my friends, we are going to leave it there. I would like to thank everybody for joining. Thank you for tuning in. I'm wishing everybody love and light and healing, and I hope to catch you guys next time.